So sometimes our faith is not enough until we put that faith into action. And in James we're told that faith without works is dead. So here today we're going to talk about the importance of putting our faith into action and how that can help to save lives from abortion, help to protect women, and literally God could use you to impact eternal souls. 40 days for life. Why 40 days? Why this effort? Why the things that we do during this time frame? Well, frankly, it all started because of four people gathered around an old wooden table in College Station, Texas, the home of Texas A&M University. And the four of us were there because we were frustrated. We were there because we had an abortion facility in our town just down the street from our office that had performed over 2,000 abortions since it opened in 1999. And the body of Christ initially had come up in an uproar when that abortion center opened trying to say, we want it out of our town, we want it to go away. But after those efforts failed, the body of Christ largely fell asleep at the wheel. Pulpits had fallen silent about abortion. The media had a pro-abortion bias. The number of people involved and the dollars going into local pro-life efforts just were dwindling. And it seemed like there was just an overwhelming sense of apathy in the community. And so the four of us who thought we had tried everything we knew how to do and nothing seemed to be enough with the little organization we worked with there, we finally realized we didn't have the answer. And we decided to turn to some other source to get the answer of what we could do to help to save more lives. And so for one hour we decided to pray. And boy, we should have done that a lot sooner than we did. Because it was during that hour of prayer that God convicted our hearts about the time frame of 40 days. And when you read throughout biblical history, don't we see that time frame over and over again, the 40 days? You see how long Noah was on the ark. How long was that? 40 days. 40 days. How long was Moses up on Mount Sinai? How long did Goliath taunt the people before David went out there with his little sling and stones? 40 days. Jesus was in the wilderness. 40 days. The apostles had 40 days with our Lord following his resurrection. So over and over again, we see God using those 40-day time frames. And frequently, he used that time frame to bring about transformation. Now, sometimes he brought the transformation during the 40 days. But there were other times, like Noah on the ark, where the transformation happened after the 40 days of faithfulness. So sometimes he uses it during and sometimes it's after. But over and over again, 40 days brought about transformation. Now how many of you would agree in Dayton, Ohio, standing across the street from Haskell's abortion facility, how many of you agree we need some transformation in our world today? Amen? Amen. So why not align ourselves with that 40 day time frame that God has used so many times? During that hour of prayer, God put three things on our hearts that we need to do during that 40 day time frame. The first thing was to pray and fast for an end to abortion. Prayer because we know that with God all things are possible. Truly, if we have the faith the size of a mustard seed, mountains can be moved. But fasting was also an important step for us. I had never fasted in my life. To be totally honest with you, prior to that first 40 days for life, I was raised in a Christian tradition that did not emphasize fasting. But when I read in scripture that some demons could only be driven out through prayer and fasting, I thought maybe this is something we've missed up till now. So we decided to fast individually and also to call upon our community to fast. And different people fasted in different ways. Two of the people at the table literally went on a bread and water fast. I was not one of those people. Most of us gave up one type of food or one meal a day. We had a family that gave up television for 40 days and told their kids all the time we used to put in front of the tube, we're now going to put it into pro-life work. And just think about just the Dayton area for a moment. If every believer in Jesus Christ did that one thing alone, gave up entertainment for 40 days and put that time right here on the sidewalk praying and helping with ministries like Elizabeth New Life Center, do you think you would begin to see some transformation in the city of Dayton? You better believe it. So prayer and fasting. The second thing that we felt led to do was to hold a grassroots out, a vigil outside of the local abortion center, literally standing every hour during the day for 40 days, bearing witness to the grave injustice that was happening in there, offering hope and help to the mothers who are at risk of going in there, and believing that that presence would also send a strong message to the people driving by, something really bad is happening here and that it would prick the conscience of those going by to realize there's a problem and I could do something, should I do something? But there was one other reason that we felt it was important to be outside of these abortion centers, because that's the place where lives are being lost. I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but not a single abortion has ever been performed in the White House. Did you know that? 
There's never been an abortion performed in the United States Supreme Court. There's never been an abortion performed in the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. or in your state capitol. Abortions happen right here across from where we stand. This is the place where we can intercede and offer help at that last moment. And our presence here does one other thing. It pricks the conscience of those working inside of this place. And I have always believed that any day that an abortion facility like Haskell's across the street here is open without people peacefully praying and bearing witness outside to the grave injustice happening inside, they should hang a big banner up in that window over there that says, we're open today with the blessing of the Christian community. Because scripture is very clear that we are called to speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, isn't it? That's not an option. That's not a multiple choice. Pick one of these things. That's a directive that we're given by our Heavenly Father. And so we must go to that place. And sometimes when those people who work in those facilities know that the community does not support what they do, that weighs on their conscience. And sometimes they will leave that line of work as we have seen happen. So prayer and fasting, vigil, and the third thing we felt led to do during that hour of prayer was to engage in grassroots outreach, spreading the pro-life message to our friends, our family members, fellow believers. Now, I don't know about the Dayton media. I'm sure it's very friendly to the pro-life cause, and they probably want to run front-page stories about all the great things that you're doing on the sidewalks. But in Bryan College Station, Texas, the media was not all that friendly to us at times, and they didn't want to. We do have the media here. Well, God bless. Welcome. We're glad you're here. What would we do without Fox, right? Thank you for being here. So sometimes we can be that media. What's the most powerful form of advertising in the world? Word of mouth, right? Us talking to people we know. So spreading that message to anybody we can that life is sacred and that there's a crisis happening here in Dayton, Ohio, and that they can be a part of the solution to that crisis. So we thought prayer and fasting, vigil and outreach, those were the three things that God put on our heart for the 40-day time frame. And sitting at that table, I have to tell you, we looked at what God had given us as a call, and we were terrified. This had never been done before. We didn't know if we could do it. We didn't know if our community would respond. But we realized that life was at stake. And so we responded with a yes to that call. We had that faith. It was not big faith. It was faith the size of a mustard seed. But as a result of that faith, three weeks later, the first 40 Days for Life kicked off in that community, and we saw over 1,000 people get involved, and abortions were slashed by 28% in that community. We were so in awe of how God showed up in a powerful way. But at the end of the campaign, I'm going to be totally honest, we were wiped out. We were exhausted. We never, ever wanted to do this again. We were so tired. And we thought nobody would ever be crazy enough to do a 40 Days for Life again. But first Dallas, Texas, then Green Bay, Wisconsin, then Houston, Texas, then Charlotte, North Carolina, then just across the Puget Sound from Seattle, Washington. Over and over again, other communities on their own began duplicating 40 days of prayer and fasting and vigil and outreach. And we began to see in every town hundreds of people involved, numerous lives saved, and a renewed sense of hope in those communities. And so we, in 2007, finally realized, wow, God's doing something profound here. I don't know if any of you have read the book by Henry Blackaby called Experiencing God. It's a really neat book talking about how to discern God's call for your life and follow it. And in that book, one of his key points is that we often don't have to look very far to find God's call for our life. We just look around where he's working right around us and join him in the work that he's doing. And we saw God working through this 40 days and thought we need to embrace this and be a part of spreading this throughout the country. And little did we know that to date, 678 40 Days for Life campaigns would be conducted in 282 cities, including Dayton, Ohio. 